Hello, everybody, and um, welcome to our reservations uh, webinar. Um, thank you for uh, attending. Uh, the purpose of today's webinar is to understand the uh, flexibility, the usability of Limo Anywhere's reservation system, to um, understand the sources um, and, and to understand exactly where you get reservations from and to kind of go over some tips and tricks and, and best practices. So I want to give myself a um, quick introduction and I'll pass it over to Kalandria for, uh, for her to introduce herself. Uh, my name is Brandon Edley. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Limo Anywhere. And um, I've been with the company for, I believe now, 12 years uh, going on. And um, so you've probably seen me do these Facebook Lives before and, and do a few trainings. So I'm really excited to go through this. And uh, again, thank you guys for coming. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Yep. And I'm Kalan. My name is Calandria Watkins. I'm the manager of customer service and support here at Limo Anywhere. Um, I've been in about a little bit over five years now, I guess, at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll be helping out with the uh, webinar here today as well. Thank you, Calandria. So just a few things uh, for housekeeping. Uh, we, uh, if you have questions, we do love questions. So um, Please feel free to please feel free to leave questions in in chat, and we'll follow up with them um, as we get through get through each section. Yes, uh, just answering a few questions, uh, Melissa. We will have this presentation uh, available to download for like on demand viewing. So um, our agenda here, um, we're going to do a, a reservations overview. And like I said, this is going over all the sources and sort of like where reservations come from and all the different applications and, and how they uh, kind of work with each other. Then we're going to do a, a deeper dive into managing the reservations uh, inside of Limo Anywhere. We'll have some time to do a uh, Q&A. And then I have a few action items for, for everyone. Now let's go over the overview. Let's do the overview. <clears throat> so this is a diagram of reservation sources and, and how they all uh, interact with each other and, and, and how they're similar to each other and sort of the actors that are involved in the process. So um, in the Limo Anywhere platform, you have um, client and passenger booking tools uh, this would be things like ORES or the online reservation system um, or PWA or, or even LPC, right? So these are our tools that your uh, customers or, or bookers, uh, concierge, you know, any kind of service like that would use to uh, book reservations and send them uh, directly into your reservation system. This is our, our reservation system, the smiley face with the dollar signs, because that's that's our goal, right? Um, then you have the operator booking forms. So uh, there's a limo anywhere mobile, like a mobile application that we have on the, um, for iOS and Android. Uh, so, so that's a sort of an operator form, right? That's a way for you to manually uh, submit reservations. And then internally we have the long rest form and the quick rest form, which, which we will go over later. Then inside of uh, Limo Anywhere, uh, along with the operator booking forms, uh, we have the LA network, right? Uh, so the LA network is, uh, you know, it allows your affiliates to digitally, you know, send reservations um, over uh, to you or, or vice versa, right? And those reservations come into your system in the same way. And then lastly, we have some um, external partners. So uh, services like Grid or uh, GroundSpan, Summit Quest, Limos.com, you know, even, even Boston Coach, right? These are third party partners that are able to uh, submit reservations uh, into your system. Now, why, why I did the diagram like this is because no matter where they come from, they're all pretty much going to 
come in the same way to you and uh you know you but you, you may just have to process them a, a little bit different but um you know reservations are reservations and um i, I just wanted everybody to have a, a good understanding of all the possible sources because you know i've uh, i've talked to users that didn't under understand or they were not aware that maybe there is a, a different booking tool or that we had a a, a tool just to um, help generate leads and, and quotes and, and close those uh, those leads so um you know so there's several tools that we have to offer to bring reservations into your system So um, I want to add that I didn't talk about quotes real quick. So um, a, a quote is a way that a reservation can also get into your system. It's a little bit different than an online reservation, but um, you know they're entered in, in the same way. So quotes can be converted to reservations um, as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about the internal part right now, which is the operator booking forms. I, I believe that this uh, is the most important thing to go over first, and then we'll, we'll start to cover the other sections. So I'm going to go over initiating a new reservation. Uh, you want to initiate a new reservation like inside of Lemo or anywhere or do it in internally depending on uh, for several different use cases, right? So maybe a customer emailed you a reservation request or an affiliate emailed you a quote for a trip that you called about. Um, I've seen a lot of instances where a client calls over the phone and now the operators need to enter it. And maybe like it's a first time customer, right? Like if a new client doesn't have an online profile, it's often easier. Uh, to create the initial reservation manually right and uh, like if they're on the phone or you just capture that customer and like last minute reservation so you know if it's a last minute service uh depending on your reservation system they may not be able to book it at last minute but it's something that, that you could do <clears throat> so the main way to create a new reservation screen or access the, the new reservation screen is by um, clicking the new res button at the top of the anywhere here if you click that it'll take you to the new reservation. Um, I want to note that it is not, uh, I, I wouldn't start by going to reservations. I, I see that mistake a lot for new users, or they'll just click on this reservations icon and try to start a new reservation from here. This is a kind of a different section where you can search and, and, and uh, view online reservations. So um, make sure when starting a new reservation, uh, you do it uh, here from the top. Now, when you are saving a reservation, there are certain uh, you know, requirements or let's say minimum requirements that you need to uh, save the trip. And it's been this way for, for a while in the morning where and I think it's a good uh, system to have where um, you need to be aware of you know, the billing contact that, that's this field here. And that's the person, you know, the entity responsible for uh, payment. Of the trip right so who, who can you collect billing from then you need the pickup date and the pickup time right, right. were you going to add something Calandria? no those are the fields mm -hmm. right okay so um with those like with the billing contacts uh i'll start with the use case of it is an individual that's calling you for uh, for a trip and they don't work for a company or anything like that. It's just a, a solo sort of, you know, uh, retail booking. Um, the billing contact likely would be the passenger, uh, like in that case, right? So the passenger is the person that's paying for it. So um, a lot of times I just tell people, like if you have somebody calling in and it's just a single person, enter their name into the uh, billing contact field. Oops. Wrong, wrong field. That they enter their name into the billing contact field, and um, you could do the same thing for passenger, right? So uh, you know that's the per the the main person who is is riding on the trip. So 
the billing contact is mandatory. We have that entered in here. Then if it's the same person, like I said, go ahead and put that there. So I'll just do the same thing. And now with the pickup date and time, it's pretty simple. It's just a date selector. Everybody's seen one of these to uh, so just select what date it is. And then for the pickup time, um, this field is can be used in, in different ways. Like you can type the time in completely. I like shortcuts. So usually I'll do, um, you know, if I was gonna do uh, 10 a.m., I would type 10 a. Mm -hmm. Whenever you click out of a field, it'll it'll automatically update. So keep in mind, like just that that uh, quick shortcut. You know, you could do 215 p and uh, click out of the field, and mm -hmm. it will um, update update the time there. You can also put in like 24 hour time if you know that offhand better. Like if you put in 1500, it'll convert to whatever time it is in 12 hour time as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so as far as the required setting to save a reservation, um, you know, outside of passenger, because that's really not it, it's billing contact, pickup date and time, there is um, an additional setting to require the payment method to be um, entered before saving. Uh, that's correct, right? I'm, pre I'm pretty sure there is a setting that, that you can turn that on. So, um, you know, by default, that's not the case, but um, in your system settings, which we're, we're gonna go over um, a little bit after this, um, you could set that um, requirement to capture that payment method before saving. Now, Calandra, a question, is that the uh, payment method itself or the actual card details? Let's talk about that. And there's, a, there's a setting to require a payment method, I believe, and that credit card may be separate. I'll check to make sure. Um, I know there's a, set, there's a setting to, to, to uh, make sure you have a payment method selected on the payment info tab specifically for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's this uh, screen right here, this field right here. If you click over to payment info, you uh, would force the reservationist or anybody entering the reservation uh, to have to select the uh, payment method. Mm -hmm. So we talked there, about, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Sorry, I just see there is, a, there is also a separate setting to uh, not allow a reservation to be saved without a credit card specifically. Mm -hmm. So. There's two different settings for sure, but they both exist. Right. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, if you want to make sure an actual card is on the reservation before it's saved, then you could set that, or you could say, okay, I just want to make sure that I know what the payment method is, like whether it's a credit card or invoice or something like that, um, or direct bill or cash, whatever payment methods you, you have. So that's the required fields. Um, now we have uh, some of the other fields, and I think we've historically referred to this as like the who, right? Um, so you know, it's an easy way to remember, you know, how these res how the reservation creation process works is think about, you know, who, what, when, where, how. And so if we get into, you know, the who, which is like who's the reservation for, you know, who's the passenger, who's paying, um, you know, those kind of things. So the uh, booking contact would be an individual that called in to book on behalf of someone else, right? Or it could be the same individual. So, so keep that in mind. If somebody is just, um, if it's a solo person, then likely the billing contact, the booking contact, and the passenger are the same people. But in account setups and when you're dealing with like corporate accounts uh, it, oftentimes those are those are different individuals you have somebody that is uh, booking for uh passengers at a company and then um you have a certain group of people or, or a separate group of people that are responsible for the for the bills um of course like i said passenger is the person taking the ride then you're able to enter in um, additional passengers as well. 
and these are um, other individuals that are that are, that are going to be on the ride. Uh, there are ways to get this information on some of your paperwork if you if you customize it. Um, but this will, uh, you know, depending on how you run your business, you know, I've seen different cases where people don't really care about the additional passengers. Um, and then I've seen others where it was like really important to keep that. So um, you are able to keep a record of everyone that is in this in, in this uh, or on this reservation by using the additional passengers. And then I think I talked about booking contact already, right? That's the person uh, booking the trip. Uh, now let's talk about service types. And this is really under the what, right? So uh, what would be, you know, what type of service is needed? What vehicle is needed? And I'll talk about why service types are important and like, how they work in limo anywhere um, so your service type boxes here so this is going to be things like from airport to airport you know charter tour these are completely customizable depending on what you do so i've seen you know wine tours as service types i've seen bachelor parties all kind of stuff um you want to go in and set this up and set these up to uh, match how you run your business because there's like pricing implications and there's ways that you can, uh, you know, control and filter pricing or even say, hey, for my, you know, from airport trips, these are the specific vehicle types that are that are available. So that's why it's important to set these up. Um, but by default, if you're just starting Limo Anywhere, these come uh, pre-configured with some like you know, industry standards and then uh, we allow you to go in and, and change them. Uh, same for uh, vehicle type. So I, I believe if you're just starting with Limo Anywhere, it's going to come with one vehicle type, and that's a sedan. Uh, but we allow you to go in, add, and customize your um, your vehicle types, as well as you know when you when you edit your vehicle types and your service types together, it's a way of controlling your pricing and setting up how that stuff works. And I'm not going to get into the details of setting up rates today. I think we'll do another webinar on it, but just know that uh, you want to set these up before you really get started. And if you want to fully take advantage of, of the reservation system. Also, thanks, Calandria. If you, you guys haven't noticed, Calandria is posting links in the chat that cover, uh, they may be knowledge base articles and uh, things like that, um, that cover um, some of the things that, that we're discussing. Okay, so we talked about the when already uh, because those are mandatory fills. So it's like, when is this trip happening? Uh, this is the pickup date and time. There are some other fields that are time-based fields, like garage in, garage out. Uh, you know, this is a drop-off time, which if you are doing hourly trips, you know, or charging per the hour, then you often will have a, have a specific drop-off time. Um, Sometimes, or most times, when you're just doing point to point uh, trips, it doesn't, it's not going to uh, fill this in uh, for you automatically. Now, in the where section, um, this is mostly like the routing details, right? So, um, you know, you can enter in, you know, this is this big section that we're looking at here. So it's uh, you know, entering in addresses, airports, seaports, FBOs, POIs. I'm gonna go through each one of these and kind of give a explanation of how, how these things work and how it's connected to uh, together. And look, we're assuming that this is a, a, a new customer, right? Cause we didn't, I didn't look up an account. So I just, I kind of just type this in. So for an address, so like if, if they wanted to be picked up um, just, you know, at a location, you know, they'll likely give you the address and um, you can type in a description here. So if it's their home address and you know, it's maybe a repeat customer, then you could give it a, des a description. Um, I don't think it's a big deal uh, whenever you're, you're doing like one-off reservations or you don't plan to create an account um, for this, uh, for this user. So you end up typing the street address. Here we go. And 
to move. If you notice, I was kind of moving around a little quickly. I wasn't like, clicking on anything. So you can uh, type in an address and tab to these next fields. Um, I put in my city and even for the state field, just a little cool shortcut. I was able to just click O to go to Oklahoma, which was nice. So uh, yeah, I don't know if, I'll, if you guys knew that, but if you tab over to this field, I can just keep hitting O on my keyboard until I find Oklahoma. That is a, a shortcut that uh, prevents you from you know, the need to scroll through all your states and provinces, right? At this point, I could probably hit pick up because it will likely find my zip code and everything. Uh, so I'll hit pick up. It'll ask me to select the address because I didn't enter it fully and I'll just click OK. Now, the reason you guys saw that is because uh, there is a feature that we have uh, turned on that verifies the addresses. Um, it is attached to uh, one of the rate calculation settings, right? So I, I think it's still attached to um, the distance based rate setting. So like, if you want to do address verification, which is going to check you know, like map providers and address uh, service providers to make sure that address actually exists, then um, you do have to uh, turn on uh, distance base rates. And we may be able to get to, to what that looks like, but um, I know we have it on our knowledge base uh, system as well, if you want to do a deeper dive. But it, you know, I didn't have to put in the full address. I, I skipped out on the zip code, the country. When I clicked, what type of piece of routing this is, right? This is like the a routing category selector, whether it's a pickup, drop off, stop, or wait. It set this uh, that piece of routing to a pickup. So this is where my customer is going to be picked up. If I want to edit it, I can click edit, change things around, change the address, add any specific notes for this piece of routing, right? This isn't going to be notes for the whole reservation, just for this address. Um, but I won't do anything. I'll just hit cancel. So the pickup is there. And so that's really the, the basis of, of, of entering an address. Like, and even for drop off stops and waits, um, I, I believe it's not any different. You enter in your address and you just click that button. The piece of routing will store itself here. Um, so I'm actually going to go over to airports and kind of show you how this works. So you'll see uh, this it's called stored airports. I like to call it like favorites, like airport favorites. So it's really kind of how it works. Uh, same with airlines. Um, so if you do, if, if you are only servicing certain airports or like your local airports, or you're only doing local service, then you could go in and select the airports you specifically service and it'll be easy for you to just click the uh, the name and it'll put the code and the airport name and the basic same thing for the um, airlines as well if you click the airline it'll enter the code and it'll enter the name so um there are caveats to to this section right so if you notice, there's tons of other, you know, there's a lot of airports, I only have two here. So, you know, how do I, do I need to go in and turn on all of, you know, enable all of these airports, uh, you know, in my system to be able to use them? Well, no, not really, right? So, in, I'll, I'm going to delete this. I'll just back out of it. So, I could type in really any airport code, right? So, even though, you know, I'm in, uh, in, Tulsa, if I'm creating a, a trip and the airport's at it's a DFW or something, I can just type it in. And I can pretty much type in any you know, airport code here, code here uh, in, in the world that, um, that you know, is found in general flight tracking tools. Um, so you could type it in, and when you type it in and select it with the mouse, that is an important part. Some people kind of forget that. They'll do this. And then they'll, you know, instead of clicking it, they'll go on about their business and, and do something. I've seen instances where it doesn't fill this out correctly whenever you do so. So I recommend just clicking on it and it'll pop up. 
Same thing for airline code. You can type in any uh, uh, two-digit uh, code. So if I want to do American Airlines, you can type that there, uh, and it'll pop up. Oh, Calandria, I didn't come ready with the flight number. You're going to have to help me out here, right? I know you know one, right? <laughs> I can um, get one. You got yeah. DFW? Yeah, yeah, it's DFW. So what we're going to do is really show you how the flight tracking works. Um, because when you type in the airport code and you do the airline code and the flight number, is, as long as this information and this information is kind of close, it's going to try to match that up and uh, do, you know, set the reservation up for, for real time flight tracking. Okay, well, let's see. Let's do, oh, you have, yeah, so yeah, so yeah, say UA, I guess United, yeah, 1181. One. You notice I'm changing this from AA to UA. I didn't have to delete oh, the sorry. name. I just changed the code, right? So, and what was the flight number? Uh, UA 1181. All right, there we go. So if I do a, uh, I don't know, I'll just do another pickup for, for now. You noticed, I'm going to edit this. I have two pickups. But what it did is it put the ETA, ETD, gave me the terminal gate and the um, arrival departure airport, right? So this reservation is set up for real-time uh, flight tracking, real-time flight updates. So why would you want that, right? What use cases? Again, in some cases, especially for airport pickups, we have settings that will attach this, like the, the time that it's tracked, that we know it's going to land to your pickup time. Um, and it'll adjust it if the flight is late um, and uh, it'll update like your dispatch screen, things like that. So you're, you're kind of aware of what's going on. Your drivers will be able to see it in their uh, driver application um, as well. So I think it's important, I mean, obviously, in, in this industry to get the, that flight info. And if you have it and put it in here and enter it correctly, it will track and, and update all throughout the uh, platform. This was a great example because I, I can see here, you see here how I, na I now have two pickups. You know, maybe I clicked the wrong button or something like that. So I can actually go back in here and edit this and I'm gonna change this to a drop off. Uh, and then there we go. So now I have a drop off. Um, you can have multiple pickups and multiple drop offs, you know, and multiple waits and, and stops. You know, I've seen the system used in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, if you're picking up someone from the airport and then on that same ride, you're just picking someone up from another terminal or something, you may want to have two pickups. And I don't think it's going to be, you know, confusing to, to have that. Um, but what we do allow you to sort of, you know, enter your routing how you want and then reconfigure it by dragging and dropping or, uh, you know, editing and changing the uh, routing details from there. So real quick, I talked about this favorite section and I'm not going to spend any time on this, but I want to show you where this is. So you want to go to my office and, um, under company resources, you have these uh, sections where you can edit your airlines and airports. Uh, think of these as like your favorites, right? That, that's what's in the drop down. So uh, if, if it's airports that you service often, make sure they're enabled in this list. And I think we have most of them already. So like when you mm -hmm. join Limo Anywhere, you would just click show all and then scroll down to your airport. Or I think you could search for it here. And if I want it, JFK, I can edit it and set the status to active. I can even do some pickup instructions and all that stuff, but um, you know, not gonna go too far in detail there. Same thing for airlines. Uh, you have your list here. You can add and customize, uh, you know, airlines even, and um, whatever the code and the name that you enter here is what's going to be shown in the, uh, in the airport code 
in an uh, airport name, airline code, and airline name fields. Okay. Let's talk about seaports. So seaports, of course, uh, you know, if you if you are a customer that's running a business on the, on the you know, coastal city or something like that, um, you have to deal with these uh, often, right? So you're able to enter in uh, in that same place I just showed you. You can enter in like your seaports and your cruise ships that are and the cruise ships that are at the seaports. Um, the biggest different, but difference between this uh, airport section and the seaport section is that these, uh, I wouldn't say that they're favorites, right? Like if you want to use uh, uh, seaports, it's best that you add them, add them here. Uh, and you really need to add, uh, you know, seaport codes and things like that. So if you set up your pricing and all that, then, then it, it all works. So it's important. Don't treat it the same as airports. It's like not optional. Um, you, you would need to go in and, uh, and set up your, your codes. And it's kind of in the same section. You can see point, uh, seaports here. And so you would you know, completely arbitrary code. You can name it whatever you want to, uh, to represent whatever seaports that are in your, uh, in your city and you know, offer pickup pick up instructions and even add whatever cruise ships that are at those seaports uh, or, or cruise lines that are at those seaports and go from there. But I wouldn't say it's optional if, if that's a, if you service seaports. The rest of the process is the same, right? You're just, you know, entering the code or selecting from the drop down. Uh, the code and the name shows up. When you do that for the cruise ship, the ship name and the lines show up, any instructions and all that, then you would still hit pick up, drop off, stop or wait. And I'll say like seaports and FBOs are similar uh, to, to really how they work. You need to add these uh, inside of that company resources section I was just showing you. So if you do um, a lot of uh, private uh, you know, flights and, and dropping your, your, pass your passengers off, at uh, private airlines, things like that, then um, you want to add that as an FBO. And then you can enter that FBO as a piece of uh, routing here. So I know that was a little uh, winded, but I think it's important to go through that section in its entirety. Calendra, can you think of anything that I did not cover there for the uh, routing? Um, only thing I would really add is most people use um points of interest for their fbo's i'm not sorry not for FBO, for seaports a lot of the time uh because it allows you to add, enter an actual address um for that to for you to use at will uh versus the seaport just has like the port name itself but not really actual physical address so when, when using the drive mm. app and things like that that where routing is important for somebody to go to directly i would just enter it in as a point of interest so you can use your ports port of galveston port of Miami with the actual address you want them to go to at will um, from the points of interest list versus the seaport area as a pro tip, I will say. Mm, I see. And, and I think it, it would have uh, like rate and pricing implications too, right? Because you won't have to, uh, if you have an existing zone that is in that address, it will price. Mm -hmm. You won't need to create a specific uh, price for that FBO or seaport. Is that, is that correct? Or for the seaport? For the seaport, yeah, because seaport, because mm -hmm. rates are all address related. So yeah, if for rates, it would definitely be even more of a, of a factor to use an actual address versus the seaport option. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna continue on. Uh, we left off on the where. Let's talk about the how, right? So, um, so that's. How long is the service, right? Like duration, information, how much does it cost? Um, how are they gonna pay? Which we, we did cover a little bit. So um, if you have an hourly trip, you could enter the duration here. I'll, I'll just say enter three. And uh, you know, this is in hours. Or I can enter the you know drop-off time. I'll do 8 p.m. And it actually, if you notice, it updated the duration of the trip. So these are uh, kind of connected. Just keep that in mind. Um, if you wonder why this is changing, it's, it's because of the uh, difference, the delta between these two. 
Um, then the cost uh, detail. So that's how much does the you know, reservation cost? If you scroll down sort of to this section, there's this uh, sort of rate table, multiple tabs. There's you know primary rates, secondary rates, and your farm out costs. So you know primary rates and secondary. I wouldn't look too much into it or think too much into it. Just know like the primary rates are primary because you are you know you don't have like you don't have to click on this other section to go to them. Uh, you're not going to use them likely all the time and you can decide to put them on your secondary tab um, but but really keeping your rate table clean and keeping the section clean so when users are calling and you're like trying to configure rates or or just enter in data um, it, it kind of keeps them keeps them uh, separate but they, they don't really function differently um, all of what you see here in like these line items these are completely configurable uh, down to what they're called and even how they calculate. So I've talked to a lot of uh, new users, uh, you know, recently. And you know, one thing I, I got was, you know, like when you start in a location, you know, sometimes, you know, most of the time, you know, your tax rates and things like that are going to be different. So, um, you know, my best advice here is, uh, make sure that you go and do your customization of your line items and all that so whenever you get your first trips and your first reservations you're not, you don't have to worry about your tax data and your tax information uh, uh, being incorrect and um, i'm going to show you where this is but like, so i'm not going to deep dive into like how to set up rates that's probably another uh, it's probably a two-hour uh webinar maybe we should do that uh, cal so yeah, we got about 20 minutes left also, B. So I want to just make us time conscious. So, but yes, that mm -hmm. would be a separate topic for sure later. More right, in depth. right. Mm -hmm. So these are your pricing items. Just note, it's pretty simple to fill these out. I like to just, you can type in in the keyboard, tab to the next field. The important thing to know is that you often will not get updates to any calculations until you you know click or tab out of the field that you're in so if i just type in 90 here nothing updates but when i hit tab now i have an updated rate or if i click out of it i have an updated rate and i've seen people get stuck right there so just keep that in mind the farm out cost um, when you are sending a reservation to one of your affiliates um, like you want them to, to actually uh, you know, do the trip or execute the trip for you. This is where you enter in like how much you're going to pay them. And you're, you're able to uh, send this over uh, to them and pass this over uh, as a rate as well. Then the payment method, um, I showed you earlier, that's the payment info tab. You have the um, drop down here. So all of these are, are uh, you can add to this list and kind of decide uh, if you want newer payment methods or, or anything else. It's kind of in that same section I showed you, uh, but it's under list management. And, um, you know, payment status, when you first create the reservation, of course, it's unpaid. And when you go to process these uh, payments, it actually up updates the, these things for you. And of course, terms, which are like when or how long do they have to, to uh, pay this. So any additional con uh, considerations, we talked about the book by field, but that can be customized in your settings. So the book to buy, if you, if you don't think you're going to use this, uh, you can uh, disable this option. Cal, where is that under my office uh, company? Disable that for what? Uh, turning off the uh, book to buy. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's in the settings as well. Yeah. It's company mm -hmm. preferences area. It is. So you can like shorten your reservation screen a little bit by four, uh, by four fields if you want to disable those. Um, and then the notes and special instructions. So uh, these are the trip notes just specific to this reservation. And then the dispatch notes are able to be viewed on the dispatch grid. If there's notes on the account, Right, like if the if the account has notes attached to it, um, then they'll show here. 
but these are internal, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they won't be, able, your, your users won't be able to see this, but it, depending on what you send out, they may be able to see uh, the trip notes unless you decide to hide from them, of course. And then uh, one of the last things I want to cover here, just on the uh, new red screen is, you know, obviously the confirmation number. So this thing, um, you can have a prefix and a suffix. So, uh, and this will automatically, like, every time you hit new res, this number goes up and there's really not any going back. So, you know, sometimes you'll be in here testing reservations out and you'll look and you say, oh, okay, I skipped a bunch of numbers. Well, like that's just how it works. I, I wouldn't worry too much, too much about, um, I guess, keeping numbers consecutive because uh, sometimes you're just testing reservations out. Okay, Cal, so I, I went over really what I want to cover in reservations. I'm going to talk about how to search like for existing reservations. Uh, Perfect. Um, okay, so just want to make sure you didn't think I, I missed anything there. So remember I told you not to create new reservations by going here uh, to this reservation section? So this is um, where you view your existing reservations, and this is where um, you, know, you can search for them and you know, find them. So when you come here, they're all... Uh, sort of uh, listed in chronological order. They go one month back. So I think the first uh, reservation I have here will be on the 28th of, of last month. Uh, but I could go in, like if I had an older reservation I was searching for, I and I knew information about it, I could say I want to search for you know the number and maybe search for the confirmation number. And I can just set the date back a little bit and I would be able to find that reservation I was looking for. So important thing for this screen is by default, this thing is gonna go 30 days back and I believe, is it 60 days forward? Uh, something like that. Um, uh, 30, so the current view, whenever you click on reservations, mm -hmm. it shows 30 days back from the current date and 30 days from the current date by default. Mm -hmm. So like if you look at trip for like 2027, you will have to put in a date range to see trips from that far out or anything outside of that range. Mm hmm. Right. Th thanks. But if you want to search and find reservations, this is one of the best places to do it. Um, the other place you can do it is, of course, the uh, global search screen. So you could uh, type in, let's say, a, a reservation number here. I'll type in that first one. Uh, now you, you, you see it there. You could just pull it up. Yes. And I guess I would like to note, I guess, a few things about that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, the global search is, um, um, I think, a little bit more limited in date range of what will show, just for optimization reasons, it was limited to a certain range of dates. Uh, but it's not, it's not, does, it does not pull up all the trips that you have in your system, though. So it is critical to know that if you need to search for any trips for anybody at all, like if you're just saying, I know I had this customer in my system at X time, sometime within my system, you can just search on that reservations area where you mm -hmm. just at Brandon. And just put on like John and passenger first name and don't specify a date at all. It'll pull up all trips that reference John with the passenger first name, period, without having a specified date range. You can just see, hey, let me just see all trips I have for John. And usually, I guess it'd be something more unique. If, if their last name is more unique, I would suggest the last name for sure. <laughs> but um, it'll it'll help you see, okay, I know I'm where is this trip for, you know, this guy to have this this name. You can just hit the put it in the search for the name. Search in passenger first or last name and hit search without a date range. It'll show you all trips for that listing. Yeah, so I would be able to like type in Ali or something like that. Mm hmm. Oh, I got to put uh, the name and then it would. And the search for a blank. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then search in the field that that would be in passenger mm -hmm. first, passenger last. Make sure you right. put the search in specifically to narrow yeah, it down. Yeah. Just, you got to point it. Tell me what mm -hmm. you want, passenger first name or passenger last name, and I'll go with it. Now it's um, filtered all the way down like that. Uh, oh, one last thing. Of course, the page size. So you notice that it's only showing a, a limited amount of reservations, only 15. But if you wanted to you know, look at all of them, then you, could, you can technically increase the page size. Now, uh, you, know, you don't have to click through as many pages if you have as many results. Um, 
So from searching reservations, we're going to go to editing reservations because it's very simple, right? Once you search for something, you're, you're likely searching for it to, to you know, view the information or change something, right? So editing a, re re editing a reservation is you know, finding it, clicking on it, opening it. The process is the same in our system for creating and editing a reservation. So, you know, once you open it up, you change whatever you want to change. I don't know, to you could, you know, hit edit on some routing, maybe delete some, whatever you need to do. Um, and then just make sure you hit save and it will um, process that edit for you. So, I think uh, editing is probably the simplest uh, part of all this. Um, okay. So next section is talk, I want to talk about managing like your online and farm dim reservations. So uh, I talked about the different sources earlier where you get reservations from the Limo Anywhere network, uh, which will be like your affiliates that you have and, or get them from uh, an online booking tool like online reservation system, LQC, um, our passenger web app, those things. So, uh, when you get those reservations, there's options that you could set up that will give you a notification. So sometimes uh, you can you can set up a notif notification internally. It'll be like a little pop up you'll get here, and then you can also set up to get a, an email or a text message as well. Um, but when you get that notification, this is where you go to actually process them. So you click on this online and e-farm in tab, and then you'll see uh, kind of the same thing that you were looking at before. If you got an email and you want to search for that specific one, you could do it using the same means that uh, Calandra was talking about earlier or, you know, searching in the confirmation number and typing in the specific confirmation number. Um, but when you receive it, you'd have to process the reservation here first before it's actually like, before it comes part, becomes a part of the rest of the system. So, um, that process is, is like we call accepting you know, to accept reject right so you know click accept reject to open up the dialogue uh that gives you some options on what you should what you can do with this reservation so uh you know, let me close this a little bit so when you do the accept reject there's basic details about the reservation some of the same stuff that's on the long reservation form uh routing details you know, all of that if you have your pricing set up like already, you know, and your rates and everything is configured, then likely it's going to come in with a price, you know, it, you know, just depending on your settings. Um, if you don't have your rate set up, you'll have to, uh, you know, enter in the price like I was showing you earlier on the reservations page. And um, you, if you do change the price, make sure you hit update rate information. And then you could decide to um, accept the reservation, right? So, um, and you can choose if you want to communicate with them on the acceptance. Uh, so this is sending the notification or standard confirmation in any notes. Now, if you want to reject the reservation, like, hey, I can't do this for whatever reason, then you would just click reject. There's a notes that you could uh, leave for the users that'll be in the email. And then you could send them a rejected notification and rejected confirmation. There are settings here where you can uh, customize like what those notifications are and what they what they look like. And then um, one other thing is quotes. So quotes can also come from the online uh, reservation system, depending on your settings. If, uh, as an example, you don't have your pricing set up, you can say, okay, well, allow them. You know, even though I didn't find they didn't find a rate allow them to submit a quote and then it'll come into your system as a quote. Um, when you get a quote, it'll kind of look like this and you need to manage it in a very similar way as your reservations. Um, you need to take action um, on it. So um, you just click the action button. I'm just gonna hit open quote request. You could set your pricing here. Now uh, we do have a way for you to, to apply rates. So if you have rates existing already, you can, apply them by using these buttons. We kind of tell you that, hey, well, you have a per passenger rate that we found, there's a promo rate, or we could do distance. And when you click on it, it'll just apply the rate to it and then you can save it. Okay, um, but what you wanna do is email the quote, right? So if a quote comes in, you know, you need to respond to the user that sent you the quote and you do that by emailing it to the user. So I'm gonna hit the email quote button and um, there is 
there are templates that you set up where you can load what you want to uh, respond with. So I'm just going to click load and select the template. You actually get a, um, a free template here when you if you go to I believe initial response or one of these tabs has this already uh, stored and you can just copy it over. Um, I added though the uh, a link here. So if you send a quote, you can add a link that allows your user to click on the link and it converts the quote to a reservation. So that's kind of how quotes and reservations are, are connected. And internally, you know, when you're creating a reservation, you can create it as a quote and it'll move it to that quote section and you can manage it as a quote. So keep that in mind. You do that by using the, uh, uh, wait, you can't, can you still do that, Kalenji? I thought you could. What is, what is, do you do what now? Creating the quote. Uh, first, no, I don't think you can actually. You have to. Uh, you can do the right. So yeah, I was. Have you done QRL? Have you went? Have you went over the quick rate look? Quick, quick yeah. rate look up tool already. Mm -hmm. That's where you would make a quote from now. Yeah, that's where it is. I, I could remember. That's a, that's Thank a long you. time ago, B. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know. My mind went straight to that. Right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can create quotes from the um, quick rate lookup too, which we should just go ahead and go over that. So yes. the quick rate lookup is think of it as a short reservation form. That's one thing. And then two, like if you have your rates entered into your system, you could quickly, like if a customer's on the phone or you just want to like play around and, and make sure your rates are configured correctly, this is like the best way to do it. Um, so, you know, to do a rate lookup, you need date and time. Like that's important for, uh, you know, how we figure out the cost. But if I type in a pickup location, I'll just type in Tulsa Airport and I'll do this address again. It will automatically like look up and see if there's any existing rates that exist uh, in my system. And mm -hmm. I could just click on the vehicle type that I want or either click the information icon and it'll show the rates that I have and, and how it calculated. So if I wanted an SUV, then now I could start entering the passenger information. But if they had an account, I could search for their account. Or if it's a new passenger, like I was doing earlier, I could just type in uh, the name and their phone number and email. Uh, then from there, I could book a reservation. When, like if I hit book, it would go to this reservation page. And now you're just at your long form. And if you hit quote, it'll send it over to the quote section. Okay. Um, let's look at some of these questions. I know we're running out of time. Uh, I, I, have you? <clears throat> I'm gonna go through chat and see. Yeah, I was trying to answer them all as quickly as I could, Lord. See um, what we have here. Yeah. So she says, uh, Alexandra says, she, I find when searching a customer's previous reservations, if you type their last name at the top and then click the reservation, open it. If you go back, it won't go back to the list of all the reservations again. You have their names. You have to go back and search their names all over. So it's, like the global search, so like whenever you, you know, and if you use the global search, you hit the reservation link and that'll go to the reservation, but if you hit the back arrow, it'll be like a submit, resubmit this page again. Oh, yeah. yeah. So my, my recommendation would just to use an open a new tab to have your list of reservations open over here and your reservation to handle over here. And you close that tab at will and have your list right back available for you whenever you need it. So open mm -hmm. a new tab. I did answer that one in the chat already. A few other match on it. And I recommend uh, another shortcut to do that. Oh. Uh, shift click on where, what you're trying to go to. So if you want to um, open up a new tab on the dispatch, as an example, you can just shift click the icon and it'll just open up a, 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 a new tab or a new window, or you can just right click on it and go to open a new new tab and kind of start from there. Uh, you don't have to like click plus, type in limo anywhere and then go from there. You could just, uh, you could just right click on it and it works just fine. Okay, was there any other questions in the chat that we didn't uh, get to? Let's see. Is there, a way to pop Is there a way to populate the spot time to have a standard time for all trip unless updated or changed manually? That is a good question. I don't think there is. No. But that's a, 
like if you wanted to say, okay, spot time is always 30 minutes before the pickup or something. That's not. No, I think they meant like a physical time, like 3 p.m. Mm, I see. I don't know. Or maybe it's calculation, but either way, it's not a field that pre pop in at all. The only one that, that kind of works that way is if you pop like a pickup time and drop off time, it can change, it'll change the duration you rank over on the right uh, during that calculation, but uh, not the spot time field, not currently. Mm -hmm. I believe you could the, you could do a status of time mapping for a driver to like when they arrive could be the spot time. But sometimes I, I know a lot of people don't want to use a system like that. They want to set the spot time to be like, no, right. this is when you should arrive. Um, so so no, that doesn't exist. But I do like that suggestion. And I'll, I'll definitely uh, copy that over, uh, put it on our uh, suggestion board. And I'll put a link for them to put it on there, but they can explain more of what they're needing exactly. Because we have a gist, but I, if, if, if they can explain just what they're needing specifically, we won't have to question. <laughs> but I did post a link to the feedback portal as well for them to post. Um, um, the This is a good question from Melissa. She says, when is LA going to make the routing details expandable like notes? Um, we're working on that, right? So there's an update coming out. Um, it's not you know, in the near term, but there is a, um, a user experience and user interface update uh, that uh, that we, we're going to make for, for reservations. And I do think the routing section, um, it, we're going to pay a lot of attention to it uh, just to make sure that it's really easy and that we simplify it as much as we can. Like if we can save you some clicks, uh, then, then we will. So um, I have had some other suggestions from the uh, product board that have suggested the same the same thing right which is mm -hmm. you know if, if you have i don't know 10 pieces of routing or something and i don't know how what, what the number is but you know this doesn't grow as much as uh, users would like so um so that that is coming um, melissa uh, thanks for your question All right, let's I would say, Angelina, I know you asked a question. Is this shoot me an email? Like, right, yeah, emailing. Just shoot me an email with your questions about getting rates set up. It's just, um, I need to know what kind of rates you're trying to set up specifically. Uh, it's a better answer to the question. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. is uh, asking, how do you get the driver should arrive to this play for them? Uh, that list where it has a 15 minute, the offset, uh, be, um, Mm. You have to have an active, you have to have that setting, I guess, on first in, in the first place to have that show up. And then you have, also have to um, have an actual valid flight in place as well for that to come available, for that driver should arrive, drop down, Frederick. Uh, so it's two steps, have the setting enabled to, uh, to have the offset on and then also have the actual flights on the trip itself that's verified to use it. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you want to show them that setting real quick. It's under my office. And company preferences, and then reservations, mm -hmm. and then it has the um, option about the uh, auto update the flight uh, setting. Let's see. Yeah, update pick up time based on the flight arrivals and offset. It's like a one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. fifth down from the top in that section. That mm -hmm. setting, fifth from the top. It's here. Uh, so this that uh, setting that will control that uh, the the offset fits from the top. Yes, uh huh. Mm -hmm. And so that that'll great. keep it. Um, so that's step one, and then you have to also have a valid flight on the trip itself, a verified flight, for it to give it a, a time to go off of. Um, as far as the time, fifteen minutes or thirty minutes, or whatever the time frame is. Right. And likely, you know, probably it's, it, I'm, a, I'm guessing it's that setting, right? They probably entered in some flights and it's like, okay, why, why isn't it still showing that? So um, hopefully that gets that, uh, that set up for you. Do we answer Alexandra's question about unverified flights? I may not see that one. Let me see. I'm trying to scroll through my responses and check. Let me see if I see it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, so I, I have it right here. So it's if a customer right. sends flight details and when you put in the reservation, sometimes it appears unverified when in fact the flight does exist on the website. So um, 
I, so I've seen this uh, before and uh, depending on how long the flight is out and if our flight uh, data provider has that flight, sometimes it'll, it'll show un unverified. So what you need to do is, you know, I would wait, you know, a, a day or two, or, or maybe even let's say a week before the reserve or for the reservation, it'll usually be able to be verified uh, by then. Kyle, have you seen any different behavior? For, 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 for flight verification? Yeah, um, you, you know, when it comes up unverified, sometimes maybe if it's mm -hmm. too far out or something like out. that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, yeah, the integrated system is using flightstats.com specifically. You know, flightstats only has about two days out. Um, I think one day back, trackable trackable data that it, that it has to use. Uh, so if it's too far out, it won't verify in a lot of cases. Sometimes it will if it's a repetitive flight that comes the same flight every single day with some information from a recent flight that it may see, <laughs> but um, it'll update whenever it's closer to that time with the more accurate data. But if it's not verified and, and the pickup is way outside the, the day range of trackable flights from flightstats.com, uh, a lot of time it won't verify because it doesn't have the information to track just yet. Thanks, Kyle. And uh, one question from Frederick. Is there a plan for reservations that are created by passengers to automatically create an account or repopulate autofill the fields needed to create the account since we cannot bill for the ride until we create an account? Mm -hmm. I would say if, the, if the, this is a customer that are created by passengers, so the passengers are creating their own reservations in some way. If that's the case, they should usually log in to their account that they have with you to have mm -hmm. those residents come in from that account from the start. Um, otherwise, if they're just looking as a guest, they won't, they won't know how and where to attach it to. If it's just a guest, you know, you may have three John Smiths, but only one has an account, for example, so there's no way to, to know where it's coming from specifically. So in short, law ha if they log into their account, it will come in from their account. Mm -hmm. So they would do that with, uh, they would be able to use uh, the online reservation system. They could log in to, to, to manage their trips. Even the PWA, right? They have PWA, uh -huh. they could do that. And I know that uh, Lee Quote Close, which is like our sort of like advanced booking uh, booking engine, um, if it's not out now, I know that they are adding the uh, you know ability for the, to manage customer accounts and things like that in that tool as well. Um, so yeah, um, please just explain. do it. Okay. Just do the. Um, Maria is asking about just explaining how to. Do the new tab again. Can you just show that real quick from the global search? Yes, yes. With the right click. I want to see it. Right click is visual. I know that we we are advanced with a shift click, but to visually show it, just right click and hit open a new tab so you can see what that looks like. I would say. Search like a name. Just... Thanks, mate. Yeah, I have to. Um... Search like John. Yeah, like for, like so that. if I if I if I try to right click on find like. I don't, I don't get that, but if I shift click on it, well, no, no. just, just well, for just, global search. Yeah, just well, search the trip first, you know, click oh, I see what you're type saying. Ali or somebody, whoever, whoever you have in your system, and find, click on the blank and search them. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's the link, you know, the reservation link. Yeah, so you could shift click that or right click. Uh, is that, that's what she's saying. Correct. So, like, right click on the word reservation on the right and open a new tab. Yep, I am. Close it out on accident. So, you just right click, open. On the reservation link. Uh huh. All right, but that's a window. But yeah, you can just, I would just, just tab. So, that's, that's probably would be crazy. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, they're, yeah, they're here. And then you could do that for do it on a lower do it on a lower tip. I think our our faces are blocking that. Do it like on one on the bottom of the oh, page. There you go. Down like on the bottom of the page area. Let me see. Take and see. And otherwise, I can see the there you go. options that you're seeing. So you should mm -hmm. be able to see it now. So you can just right click on the link, and then you can go to open link and new tab. It'll just right. keep opening up new tabs. Now don't forget to close these things once you're done, right? But uh. But yeah, it, it'll it'll open them up, and then you can also do a, a new window. And depending on what you're doing, you know, I like to use separate windows sometimes, or maybe you want to do split screen, uh, you know, one part here, and uh, you know, one part there, or something like that, right? Um, 
Okay. Let's see. We do FedEx pilots and their flights never verify the same day. We just see as a FedEx issue. Okay. Um, thanks, Joe. We answered Maria's question and then Frederick went in. So I think we actually answered everyone's questions. Um, if you guys have any other questions or have any feedback uh, about this walkthrough or even have some uh, feedback of, about what the uh, you know, next walkthrough you, you, you'd like to see or something you, you want us to take a deep dive into, then um, please feel free to shoot me an email, brandon at limoanywhere.com. Um, if you have questions specific to like anything that we covered, you can reach out to support, which is support at Um uh, Anything you want to add, Calandria, uh, as we close? Bang. I uh, know yeah, the support team is available to answer y'all's questions as well, even if we didn't get to cover something that was in this chat um, currently. And my email is just cwatkins at limoanywhere.com as well. So um, to email me directly or just support at limoanywhere.com either way, or get able to do the support team to reach out to you to offer you additional help as you need. Okay, well, this was super fun. Uh, thanks everybody for um, attending. Again, we're gonna uh, repost this on our uh, Facebook page and on our YouTube page. We'll probably, you know, clean up a little bit. Um, but other than that, again, like I said, thanks a lot for uh, attending. Hope to see you guys later. Thanks everybody.